what's up everybody? I'm Max from Texicana Barbecue. Today we are in Lexington, Texas. So that is Nose Barbecue. This is the Texas Monthly's list and that is the number one on this list. We're gonna have a chat with the queen of barbecue, Tutsi Tamanets, the pit master as known as barbecue. We're gonna have a chat with Kerry, the owner. Let's go and check it out. So we are here with Mr. Kerry, owner of Snow's Barbecue. So Kerry, how you come up with the idea of opening a Snow's Barbecue? Uh, many in the early 90s, I had a farm and ranch store here at this location. Miss Tootsie had had the market a kind of catty corner behind us, and uh, once she closed up in '96 and sold due to her husband's health. I knew this would be a great location right on the corridor to the auction barn of local farmers and ranchers. And I'm always an entrepreneur trying to do something different. I thought it would be good and I figured between us we could make a pretty good combination. And, and we visited in the oh, later 90s and she had committed to helping the people she had sold to. Gotcha. Year or two rocked along. She stopped me one day and she said, when are you going to open something? I said, I, there's no way right now. I was too busy. Another year or two rocked along, I stopped and visited with her and she said, uh, if you're still serious about opening something, let's sit down and visit. And we sat down one uh, Sunday afternoon in my shop and visited and I decided at that point we was going to make a go at it and I started building the pits. That was in November of 2002 uh, and we opened up March of 2003. March of First several years it was just kind of all locals and stuff. Again, she would take care of all the cooking out back. I did all the cutting and the lady inside that cuts now was our other employee and that was it. And it uh, everything went good and then in 08 with the recognition is when it just that's, that's what it, it's changed, when it the whole changed game. overnight. But yeah, it, I come down on a Texas Monthly said it's gonna increase your business and I come down on Monday and added four foot to the brisket pit. That was a waste, waste just of happened time. like that. Overnight. It's that powerful. And we thought, you know, we thought this will go on a month or two and it'll kind yeah, of yeah, fade yeah. back out. And we're in the 11th year of, of it and it's still just as busy it was then just about but to this to this day a big slice of your customer they're still locals locals still come here or is more a few but 95 percent of our business are travelers and it's great we get repeat customers from all over the world that's when it's yeah, 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 that's yeah. when it's really special that's and great. good you know we get they may make an annual run and they'll email me and say hey in three weeks we're coming back again that's when it's nice that you were good enough the first time for them to come back. It's kind of funny because it started local and then when we kind of And that's what we, you know, we strive so much on our customer service. We've got a great product, but it's a whole package deal. You know, she yes. finds time to visit with them, take pictures. You know, we interact with the line. We want their whole experience to be good. If they've got time to, you know, out of their Saturday morning to come see us, we've got time to visit with them or show them the pits or whatever. And that's always a plus. You know, people... A lot of people are not used to that, you know, the hospitality, yeah, 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 and that's yeah. what we we really strive on. And it's taken years to, you know, with the girls and everybody to let them learn really what it takes to, you know, gotcha. great customer service. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a big part of it. That's it's a, a huge part of, part of it. I mean, you can't make somebody like your product, but when you have exceptional customer service, it may eliminate them from talking negative when they leave. Yeah, you know, they like I said, you. People are going to like it, but the barbecue people that travel are the best group of people I have ever met. Oh, hell yeah, hell I yeah. mean, they are just a wonderful and this group is, this of is people. this is Gary right here, always on his phone. That's, uh, that's it. Snow's Barbecue. So, Gary, what's your plan for the future? Snow, how you how you picture Snow's barbecue future? We're gonna rock along just like we are, Saturdays only, and 
people can't understand why we don't do more than one day a week, but where we're at in our location, it's just not feasible. And, and again, everybody enjoys it one day a week, and more than that, it becomes a job, and it's... Uh, we're going to keep it one day a week and keep rocking along as long as Miss Tootsie wants to barbecue. I think it's it plays an important part of her health is staying busy and interacting with the customers. It does wonders for her, and we're going to keep doing the same thing. We got you. So, you guys know barbecue, and of course you got Tootsie down. Good combination. What do you think, what do you think is knows with no Tootsie? How's it going to be like? Snows without Tootsie is not anything. I mean, it goes both ways. It goes both ways, right? Tootsie wouldn't have been known if it wasn't for Snows, and Snows wouldn't have been known if it wasn't for Tootsie. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, but no, we're going we're gonna to rock along as long as she does. Love it, love it, love <laughs> it, love it. Thank you. All righty. So we are here with my dear friend Clay. Clay Cloud Kill. That's right. Yeah, I was pretty close, close enough. Close, close. So he's a pit master, one of the pit masters over here at uh, Snow's Barbecue. So Clay, what I mean, what, what you do every day over here? I think people are interested in uh, your kind of routine. You know, how 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 all started over here? So you guys, you come over here and then what? Uh, I get here around 8:30. Gotcha. And then I'll light the brisket bit. Mm -hmm. I'll put brisket on around 10, and kind of set everything up for Tootsie when she shows up at two. Gotcha. Um, and then once she shows up, we'll put uh, everything else on but the sausage. How, how, for how many brisket you cook? Uh, uh, Anywhere like from seven. 60 to 85. 60 to a pretty good number, pretty yeah. good number. Yeah. When again, we're in Lexington, Texas, so we're not in Austin, you know. So it's it, they're, they're big number, really. right. I guarantee you that. Then, then after that, uh, then after that, we're uh, we'll wrap probably around four. Gotcha. Um, We'll, uh, we'll try and get everything, well, we'll, we'll get everything finished like around 7.30, 8 o'clock. So, and then we'll open it. We'll open it at 8. Yeah. And then it will be, you know, after you open, you kind of, because it's almost in demand. You cook pretty much the same day for uh, for service, which right. is something very different about other, other, other barbecue places. See, I respect a lot this place because they have their own style. Uh, if you go in Austin, the kind of style, I mean, it's not a lie to say that Aaron Franklin had a very big influence oh, yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. in, in, in this place. And, you know, me working there, when I taste some other barbecue down there, I, I, I'll experience that. I realize, oh, yeah, this is very similar to our style. But about three years ago, when I, when I first met him, uh, it was it was completely different. You know, I I, I did, this is something that I never I never had before. Now you see it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and you know the couple of things that we do. And the electric knife. And uh, yeah, yeah, electric knife and uh, uh, but the electric knife, uh, you know, to me it, it seems obscene, guy. But there is a reason why. There is a reason. There is a reason why. You want to explain us the, the reason? So we have a, a smaller rest time. So when we pull the brisket it's off they're really jelly and they're fall apart so it's it's easier for the lady inside to cut with the electric knife versus a brisket a brisket knife. Yeah. and I've we've we've had people you know barbecue people say oh you shouldn't do that you know and we say okay here's a knife you know yeah try and uh, cut it and I, I, I'll, cut be, it I'll be one of those guys because to me you say oh it's weird but then I, I've seen it it's like very jello uh, and it's it is different but it 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 works for snow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. And uh, so, how did you end up working here? Um, I, uh, I started eating her barbecue when I was a little kid. And then I moved up here five years ago. And yeah. so, her son got sick gotcha. and couldn't work anymore. And I was just a regular. And the ladies inside liked me and they said, Would you like to work here? And I said, Yes. That's as simple as that. Yes, and to me that was a dream come true because other than my dad and a friend that I grew up barbecuing with, Tootsie was, you know, my barbecue icon. So even as like a young kid, I loved barbecue. She was a huge reason for it. 
And this, it all happened before the Texas Monthly, the list and the big rush of yeah, people coming in. Right. So you have seen it both sides, like right. h- how that affected, you know, the, the, the day-to-day operation. And I mean, it, it was definitely different. You know, we'd, uh, when the, when the second time Snow's got number one, it was, you know, crazy lines for the first six months. Um, you know, we'd have to do like Franklin does and count everyone yeah, yeah. and kind of pre-order and see what they wanted. And, um, you know, and every once in a while we'll, we'll get that. Maybe like a like a rerun off of a television show yeah. or something comes on and, you know, all of a sudden we're like, wow, you know, didn't expect this. That was pretty crazy. Anyway, let's talk now about something particular serious and I want to take a minute for it. Uh, I don't know if it's the right man, you know, the right, but I want to I get the risk. Let's talk about the Clay's Mansion. Okay, Clay's Mansion, what is this? Because I had a lot of, a lot of people talking about that. The Playboy Mansion? Yeah, Playboy Mansion. What, what exactly is that? It's just my little farmhouse. For Why they call it a mansion? It reminds me like the Elvis Mansion. It's not a mansion. It's, it's a slider house? What is it? No, it's just a little barn house. It's a little barn and house. And for some reason, people around town call it the Clayboy Mansion. They get the Clayboy Mansion. Yeah, but Clay know. and Boy, what, why is Clayboy Mansion? So, You're gonna get in trouble. What no, 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 no. It's it's <laughs> it's um. So my name's Clay, but yeah, as, Clayboy as was know. my nickname. Oh, is really? Yeah. Gotcha. I didn't know that. I, I just got yeah. something new about you. Yeah. It's I was it, you know I was three or four and people were like, Clayboy, come here. So Clay, why don't you show us your magic today, right, right. there? Voila. <laughs> <laughs> So Clay, why don't you show us today, you know, what, what you do, like your magic, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Show us a little bit and get out of this pile of wood. <laughs> All right, so this is the brisket pit. Um, we do seven pound briskets. Uh, they go on around. Is this a Moberg? No, it's not a Moberg. <laughs> it's a uh, snowman. Gotcha. Snowman original. Because um, you guys build the stuff. Yeah, Kerry builds all the pits. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, briskets go on at 10, um, be ready around seven. So they're all, you know, smaller, seven pounds. We can put a whole bunch on cooking about nine, 10 hours. Temperature, can we, can we know? Uh, yeah, they go on at, um, I put them on pretty hot. So it'll be 300. Once the brisket goes on, it'll be around 275. Okay. I'll run that for one or two hours, get color, and then put the hottest spot on 225. Okay, which is the, the hottest part in this kind of... Uh, it's going to be up here. Be so up we'll here. load uh, the middle door and this last door. We'll leave this one open. And uh, about, you know, a few hours in, I'll rotate the, the coolest spot to the warmest spot. And, you know, try and get them all. Gotcha, gotcha. Then what? Uh, ribs are over here. rib pit and the rib pit will load all the doors in this one. Um, we have plates, probably four plates that run about right to here. So the hottest spot is probably this bottom shelf. Okay. And, the heat's... and it kind of heats up with the ribs over here cook just fine and get a beautiful color. Uh, the smoke ring. So, you know, most people don't, you don't see two racks, yeah, you know, yeah. cooking a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but it, it does pretty well. Mainly what you do, you do brisket, you do ribs? Ribs and turkey. And turkey. And turkey will go on at the brisket. Pit. And Tootsie is more pork chop, the pork uh, steak. Pork steak, chicken, and sausage. Gotcha. Okay. And what what about those pit over there, those direct heat? Well, the I'll show you the, the old pit over here is like the first pit they, um, they started with. Do you know? This is the old pit, and we'll use this. At midnight, I'll, I'll fill that up for Tootsie, and I'll start burning it. Okay. When she gets in at two, she takes the coals and heats up the boxes and does her thing. When we wrap the briskets, the briskets that didn't get rotated as much, we'll cook in here. We call, we call those green, okay. you know, the green briskets. So yeah. we'll, we'll put them in here, and we'll cook these at about 300 to 300. We'll give it a, the last final shot. Yeah, to try and catch it up with the briskets that were already, you know, further along. Yeah. So by around... You, why you do this? For lack of space? Lack of space and, and just kind of catching up and utilizing everything that he has. Gotcha. You know, 
so the, the ones that needed the ketchup, we can catch them up. And they're they're normally done around 9:30, 10. Uh, and sometimes it's the smaller briskets. You know, that we didn't I didn't rotate it all; I just rotated the, the seven. Pound. But it, it you, we get the same result. This pig. Yeah. So this other feed, which there lately there are not so many plays. You know, right. those kind of, uh, those kind of set up. Can you tell us a little bit how the heat works and how the whole thing works? So she'll feed the coals in here, and then she'll place the meat on top over here. The smoke will come out of the door, it'll come out of the sides. It'll come out of this guy too. It's not It's not just this. Yeah. It kind of comes out everywhere if you watch it. Yeah. And during that cook, there's a lot of drippings and condensation and all these different chemicals. That but you move the, the coals around from the ember from here to there, or did they just, you shove it in the middle just, and She just it. pitches them in. Pitches and in. she does it really evenly. Okay. And so it, you know, you get an even cook and it takes about six to eight hours for chicken and pork stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. That, that'll be all. Well, during that we mop. Okay. I'll mop the ribs and she'll mop the chicken. Uh, I'm sorry, the chicken and the pork steak. Okay. Um, everything but the sausage and the brisket doesn't get mopped. But you mop after how long? The very maybe last couple, hour. A few hours in. A few hours in. Yeah. You, you start know. mopping to keep it Right, because in these pits, you know, you get a lot of ash that comes up. Yeah, yeah. And so when she sees all that ash on top of there, she knows when to mop it. So. It's not, it's it's probably halfway through. You know. Gotcha. So this is the story you tell to everyone. But now tell me the secret, okay? I want to know the exact way you cook it. Okay, come on. It's me and it's, you. It's Nobody's fire, watching. It's her fire management. It's her fire management. It's her fire management. That's, fire management. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Because there's, there's people around here that I've seen, even like fundraisers that have happened here, I've seen mm -hmm. locals cook three different ways in our Gotcha. Where it's hotter and fast, or it's lighter and then hotter at end, or... The coal size is different, and that's mainly a, a big difference that I see around people, people around here because all the kids here learn to cook like this, but it was their style. Like, their style in different ways, right. generation to generation. Right. At the end, man, barbecue is a lot, it's a lot of these damn fire management, yeah. what makes a lot of the because same offset smoker or same smoker, whatever, but fire management, and you're confirming my theory, it does make the difference. It does, makes everything. I think so. <laughs> That'll be all for your favorite fire manage managers, Max, and Tootsie. Oh, sorry, Clay. <laughs> and Clay. All right, guys. See you all. So we are here at Nose Barbecue and Pitmaster Tutsi Tamanitz, the heart and soul of this place and the queen of barbecue. How are you Tutsi today? I'm doing just fine. Was busy? a good day. Busy day today, right? Busy day today. Busy day. The weather turned out very pretty and people came out. Awesome. So Tutsi, how do you start doing barbecue? I mean, which were your first steps in, into the barbecue scene? How I really got into the yeah, business? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, my husband worked for a meat market in Giddings, the city meat market, okay. and they were short-handed. So uh, the boss asked my husband, do you think Tootsie would come in and help Orange out at the barbecue pit? And he said, check with her, she's at the house. So he called and the boss called and asked me if I'd help. And I said, I'd be more than happy to. I, you know, Do haven't done work, any yeah. public work like this, but uh, I'm very interested in learning. Yeah, so, you're still learning, right? <laughs> right. And uh, so I went in, I thought it was just for a day or two, and it ended up being a week and another week and a month. And, and then? I ended up being there 10 years. Okay. And during that time, I worked the barbecue pit, I worked the fresh meat counter where we actually had the fresh meats cut and in the counter, gotcha. and the customer would say, I want that steak or that steak. And, We'd wrap it, weigh it, and wrap it for them. So at some point, the meat market, you shut, you shut down the meat market, and you moved here. How was the transition? Uh, from the owner of the meat market in Giddings bought a meat market here in Lexington. Gotcha. 
and since I'm from Lexington, he sent me up here to operate it for him. You were born and raised over here. I was right? raised okay, here. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And uh, so I enjoyed the work here in this market here in Lexington so much that I convinced my husband that we ought to buy it and you know have a market of our own and. That's what we did, and we had it for 20 years until he suffered a stroke in 96. And at wow. that time, we had to sell out because things looked real bad. They were real bad. And uh, the people that bought it at that time asked if I would continue cooking for them on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed barbecuing, so that was just something I was real interested in. I wanted to stay in the barbecue business, and it was only on Saturdays, so... Uh, that's what I did, and Terry had come by and talked to me and wanted to open up down here. And I said, not at the present time. His best decision ever, probably. Well, <laughs> I, I don't go back on my word. I had told these people I'd work for them, and I told Kerry, I said, when the time comes that I'm not happy here, if things don't work out, you'll be the first person to know because you're the only person that has come to me. Mm -hmm. since I sold the market and since these people purchased it. And uh, he would stop by ever so often on his way to work on Saturday mornings. And uh, I had had several different owners. And uh, it had just gotten to the point that uh, they weren't satisfied if we had meat left over. They weren't satisfied okay. if we sold out too early, if it was this or it was that. It was time to lay out. You, you can't predict what the, cost, the public will buy. That's barbecue. So it's, yeah, it's, that's... Well, a restaurant owner, he doesn't know what, yeah, yeah, what yeah. steaks are going to sell and what's not going to sell. And I mean, that's just a gamble in life. And people are, are they purchase different things. So anyway, I told him, if you're interested in opening up a, a barbecue place I said let's sit down and talk and we got together Thanksgiving week and I told him I liked the pits and he went and got the measurements on them and uh, built my fire box and he built the pits here at Snows and we set March the 1st of 2003 to be our opening So you were day. involved in the very beginning how to set up a place in a whole mm -hmm. nine yards? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So um you know, I, I didn't come down here and look at this place because uh, he had it rented. And uh, if he could see the way we had our pits at that meat market, you know, you want them close together that you don't have to walk so Go far. Go back and forth, mm -hmm. logistics. And with our direct heat pits, he's got them real close together. The indirect pits, they are both together. So, uh, yeah. you know, Clay doesn't have to cover yeah. a lot of ground to put wood on this one or put wood on that one. So you come over here very early in the morning or at night and I would what come you in do? at two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And 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 put the briskets on okay. there. And at that time uh, the local customers didn't come to town until around maybe eleven o'clock to buy their meats for lunch. Right. So I had from two till ten to get the briskets ready. Well, when Texas Monthly came around was, and named us number one yeah. in 2008, they asked Kerry, what time do you open up? And he said, 8 o'clock, and I like to die. And I thought, oh, my God, from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock, there's no way we can have the briskets ready. So uh, he, doing shift work, he uh, started coming in Friday night, putting the briskets on, and then I would still get here at 2 o'clock to put the rest of the meat on. Yeah. And uh, as time rolled along, I would tell my son how the people, after we were named number one, were lined up down the street. So he came up several Saturday mornings just to see how many people were here. And standing here, I'd tell him I need some wood on the firebox, or I need wood here, or I need sausage, and tell him what I needed. So Kerry asked him, would you be interested in coming in on Friday evenings mm -hmm. and putting the briskets on and then mm -hmm. have your mother when she gets here? And he said, sure, I'd enjoy that. Is that, taking so many pictures, making so many videos, is that kind of tiring? You know, you get tired out of it or? Not really. Not really. Uh, uh, you know, I tell this story so often and I often <laughs> wonder how many different ways I've said it. I mean, it's only one way that life has been, but it might be that I have 
you know, mention something in one and not yeah, in yeah, another, yeah, 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 and it's really, yeah, yeah. I, I wonder but how I, close I, they're together I, they are. <laughs> I remember my first time over here actually was three years ago, mm -hmm. and it was uh, with my old boss, uh, Bill Curlin from Curlin Barbecue in Austin, Texas. And I remember, because you know, I always ask questions and I take pictures and stuff, but I remember how you look at me in the face. It was a simple gesture. You shake my hand and you look at me in the eyes. And nowadays, no, this, so many people, we don't do that no more, you know. So I say, wow, it was, uh, I don't know, three, four generations clashing together, <laughs> and uh, that, that was kind of, that was kind of funny. I want to ask you something, a little bit personal question. I think a lot of people are going to be interested about How was your your childhood like? You know, how, how you grew up, you know, how, how was back then back the life? Then, yeah. Uh, my daddy was a farmer. Okay. Uh, he farmed with teams, horses, mules, gotcha. before he had a tractor. So because you're clear, you're a hard worker. So I work, for my understanding, my, I'm a hard worker also. My father was a hard worker. It, it, it comes from generation to generation. Generation to right? generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was always daddy's girl. I, I went everywhere with daddy. Right. Well, in the morning when he would uh, put the harnesses on his team to go plow, he would put the saddle on my horse and I'd follow him around in the field. That's it. I would just always be with daddy. Uh, I mean, there were things that I would stay home and, and help mother with. Well, this is when I was probably three, four years old. Wow. So it wasn't a whole lot I could do at the house at that time. I had a little sister I had to help take care of sometime. But uh, it was just that I, I enjoyed the outdoors, I guess. Maybe that's where that's I'm probably. such an outdoor person. I have always been outdoors. And I just love the fresh air and I love the smell of fresh soil being plowed. That's the sweetest smell for that. me. Love it, love it, love it. And so you work one day here, right? And the rest of the week? I work for the public school in Giddies gotcha. with the grounds department. So I'm outside at school too. So when it was, tomorrow you we will rest and on Monday you're going to mm -hmm. start working. Go back to school. You're not going to retire any soon, right? I'm not planning <laughs> on it. If God gives me health and strength and a clear mind, a good mind, then, wow, that, you know. You seem to do pretty good so far. So, so far. <laughs> uh, I mean, in April, I'll be 84. Wow. That's according to the calendar. Wow. And I have made this remark quite often. I don't know how an 80-plus lady should feel, but I don't consider myself in my 80s. Yeah. As I think about maybe I'm in my fifties or sixties. You don't look like you're ready. You don't move around like you're ready. You know, I know. You know, so many people that are in their sixty, they are already gone. Can't you know, they give this, up. You know, I yeah. Can't do that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do this. I can't. Hey, yeah, I'm too old for this and too old for that. So a lot of respect. Mm -hmm. A lot of respect from that. Uh, thank you for your time, Tutsi. I really, I know how busy you are and how tired you are because you've been here since two in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. So I know you were to, to go through a service ain't easy. Uh, but on, on my opinion, you know, I, when I say, you know, the, the queen of barbecue is, is a true story. So I think if you're an inspiration for everybody who want to do Well, thank you. I appreciate job. that. And, uh, you know, like I tell some of the children at school, I don't use the words I can't because can't never could do anything. So yeah. I'll try. It looks hard. Well, I'll see what I can do about it. But I just don't say I can't. Because if there's a will, there's a way. And I always try to find some kind of way that I can get it done with whatever has to be done. Do what you can where we are with what you have, right? Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's right. Work with what I have to make the best of what I can with what I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Tootsie. Thank, Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Tootsie. Thanks so much. Yeah, he Thank got that on camera. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut. <laughs>